Hi, my name is Larry Jordan and welcome to the Digital Production Buzz. We cover everything about digital video from production to editing to output because what you don't know can often cost you a lot of time and sometimes a lot of money. Today I want to talk about creating video for the web, not content, but some technical things that you might want to keep in mind. There are really two key issues. The first is we have a small image size when we put it to the web, and this affects camera framing. The second, we have small file size. This affects camera movement, and it affects compression. You know, there's a lot of discussion about whether MTV editing is a good thing or a bad thing, and they generally mean that as editing that's got really, really rapid cutting because the rapid cutting gets in the way of whatever performance the, the talent themselves has. One of the number one rules, of, if you've got someone that has no performing skills whatsoever, is keep changing the angles so nobody can see that they have no performing skills. But if you've got someone that can sing, or you've got someone that can dance, or you've got someone that has something to say that can tell a story, then don't interfere with what they're doing. Let them perform. Just hold the camera still. Don't feel that you have to cut just because you can. And that gets me to what I consider my five thoughts when you're working for web video. And the first, and probably the most important, when you're shooting video for the web, put the camera on a tripod. Don't use a handheld camera. And the reason is twofold. One, handheld work is distracting. It gets back to that whole issue of, of who's got talent and who doesn't. If they, don't, if they can't dance and they can't sing, then for heaven's sakes, take the camera handheld and move it all over everywhere because it's going to distract your audience and they're going to say, whoa, unsteady camera work as opposed to, whoa, these guys can't perform. The second problem we've got with handheld camera work is compression. File sizes of handheld cameras are three, four, even five times bigger than file sizes of lockdown camera shots. If we're trying to create a small file size, as soon as you start to move that camera in some sort of jerky, unsteady way, your file sizes are going to balloon, your download times are going to get a lot longer, and your file sizes will explode and your bandwidth costs go up. Other than that, it's not a problem. Second thought, avoid grandiose wide shots because if the image is only about that big and you have this huge wide shot, everybody's the size of, well, not even the size of a postage stamp, the size of a pinhead. Wide shots are not your friend when you're working with small images as, as you are on the web. Also avoid rapid pans. Quickly moving the camera from one side to the other causes artifacting, especially during compression. And it gets really, really hard to see. It also makes your file sizes increase. If you're going to do a pan, do it nice and easy. But try to avoid whip pans unless they're so blindingly fast that you don't want anybody to see what's going on. Now there's a reason to do that kind of a rapid pan, but then make it really, really fast. Avoid lingering wipes and lingering dissolves. They take forever to compress. Try to keep your dissolves more sprightly. Try to keep your wipes in a shorter period of time. The fifth rule is make your text, make your titles big enough that they can be read on a small size screen. 18 point, 24 point type won't cut it when you're cutting the size to a quarter or an eighth or smaller than what you're actually shooting. Also, a couple of thoughts for compression. Avoid jittery movements, jittery effects, adding noise, because all these things make your file sizes bigger, and file sizes make for longer download times, more bandwidth costs, that sort of thing. Anything that's, that's changing rapidly from frame to frame makes it harder and harder to compress, even with good codecs. And the second rule is you're always doing a balance between trying to have the file size be as small as possible, which means you're working with lower bandwidth, and having the highest possible image quality. You don't need to have the world's biggest file. Just keep in mind that as you get it smaller and smaller, your image quality decreases. I have a lot more suggestions for you, both in terms of compression tips and some image sizes that you can compress your files into in the premium version of this podcast. And you can also learn more by visiting our website. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching the Digital Production Buzz.